Hi, I'm Jess. And I'm Becca. And this is Reading Between the Spines. A podcast. A podcast. <laughs> Do you know when you heard me like don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it? I know that you're like don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, and I'm like say it, say it. How are you being? What? Since I talked to you earlier. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just yeah. Like asking how you are. <laughs> Imagine if we only were friends doing the podcast and we like hadn't spoken to each other in nearly a year. What? Like um, we just have a working relationship, like um, yeah, Paris and Nicole. Yeah. Season four of The Simple Life. <laughs> oh my god, that was a simple life, wasn't it? Just getting to sit and watch that. No responsibilities, no global pandemic, which is why we haven't recorded since March. Yeah, <laughs> we are going to discuss uh, two of our favourite reads of last year. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I've got a yard. <laughs> Do you want to go first, or shall I? You can go first. What's your first pick? It is. The Reincarnation of Tom, written by Aidan Simpson. Mm-hmm. So it's not a, it's not a long book, but the thing that made me want to get it was the cover is a chicken with a little arrow pointing to it saying, this is Tom. Right. So I was like, yes, why is Tom a chicken? <laughs> so the, it basically revolves around... Um, guy called Dom mm-hmm. that there's um, a known thing when you die if you as you as you die in kind of your last moments if you sing I'm blue da boo dee ba boo da you sing that then you reincarnate and if you don't sing it that's it you don't continue literally literally the Eiffel 55 or Eiffel 65 song is literally that so oh, okay. if they sing the if they sing the song, they remember like the You past. remember that life in the next. Yeah. Right. So he, like his first reincarnation's a chicken. And he starts because obviously he can remember things, so he's trying to work things out. Mm-hmm. And then this other chicken that's there is also one of these people. And then, anyway, he's not a chicken for long. And then he goes back into when, around the time period when Hitler was a child, and bumps in, bumps into like a couple of people that are reincarnated as well. But you basically can be reincarnated to any time in history, and also into people and animals and stuff. So he comes back as this like professor and bumps into these people and obviously they're from the future as well. So they're like, oh well, we're gonna kill Hitler when he's a child, so World War Two can't happen. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, oh well, we can't really change the future because we don't know what's gonna happen. So it's all that. And then this group of people basically uh, decide to hunt him down in every life is reincarnated into they find him and kill him right to basically try to catch him out so he can't keep on coming back and there's more there's more to it but it's like got really dark humor in it i think that's why i liked it yeah. but it's it's just like yeah it's just about this guy learning from each life he's in and each animal and he's a tree for some of it Does he have to sing I'm blue, dabba dee, dabba die, every time? Does he just do it in his head? Because how does he sing that as a chicken? Yeah, yeah, just in his head. Oh, just in his head, okay. Yeah. I feel it would be really disturbing if you were there and someone died and then they'd just, like, belted that out. I think that would be really <laughs> Yeah, just, just, in, just in his head. But I don't think you would like... ever recover from witnessing that. So, yeah, so he jumps into different periods of time like kind of world war ii that and kind of makes a couple of friends along the way and it's it's all kind of just about learning 
that people have tried to change history and how many times have people gone and changed things and that's why the future is how it is now. Mm-hmm. But it's just funny, everyone is in each one, like when he's a chicken and he's a he's a tiger, he's a tree. Yeah. Uh yeah. It was just a good it would like it were an enjoyable read, I think just because of the dark humour in it. It was just yeah. so random. But yeah, that was one of the good ones I read. And shall I do my second one? Or do you want to do one? Or shall I do both no. mine? Yeah, you can do your second one now. So my second one is A Keeper, written by Graham Norton. Yeah. And when I read it, I thought it was going to be a nice light-hearted novel. And I it did wasn't. until you told me. I thought, oh, Graham Norton, yeah. that sounds like a nice, peaceful, funny book. So the premise of the plot, because I properly read up on it a bit more, because I actually forgot parts of it. Yeah is it's it flicks between this woman who has traveled back to Ireland from America to clear her mum's house out because mum's died. Right. And she finds all these letters and stuff, which is a mum talking like sending letters to this guy. And then other chapters flick to show the story like the mum talking to the guy and how they met and obviously because it's this girl's dad and she never understood why the dad were never kind of in in a life right so it it escalates more and more like each time it flicks back to a chapter of the mum god let me just flick my so it's basically this guy is I want to say simple, but it's that's the completely wrong <laughs> phrase to you. I don't know how. He's basically been brought up working on a farm, so mm-hmm. hasn't gone to school and stuff. So he's not educated, and his mum's very controlling. So he's lived his life under her control, yeah. and she's a bit she's a bit crazy, right? So they keep on talking to this woman and end up essentially kidnapping her. Like the his mum keeps on drugging her and keeps on lying, being like, Oh, you've just got an illness, just rest and stay and she's there for ages. Yeah. And it all escalates throughout to her realising that she's being poisoned, like she's being drugged and poisoned and Mm -hmm. things are right and then she's trying to get this guy to be kind of like you need to let me go like this is wrong yeah so it then shows him kind of his character arc and deciding to help her and stuff and her try to escape back and like she has this baby and stuff Right. But I can't say much about it. It's, it sounds really bland when I'm saying it, but I can't. It that spoils. does not sound bland. It sounds like an episode of Criminal Minds. It it ruins all like the plot twists in it if I say too much about it. Yeah. But there's one scene in it, and I've told you about it, that was so graphic that it's it's stuck in my head, <laughs> and it's not it's not a sex scene. Okay. It's a death. It's a it's a death scene. That's better than the other one. But it would just how how it would just how vividly it would describe like I don't know. Oh, uh, like right, on about like because they've been they've they've been hung, hmm. and it describes like the legs twitching and stuff and. Do you know when it's like detail? I'm like, oh, I don't need this. <laughs> like swinging in wind. Especially don't need that from Graham Norton. Yeah, I'm quite. I don't know because we've we've grown up with Graham Norton just being present and just being nice and funny. 
Yeah. I love Graham Norton. I like Graham Norton. He's just really nice. Did you see him on this morning? Yeah. When, with Alison Hammond. I love Alison Hammond as well. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I'd love to just have a day with her, do you know, yeah. just like hang out with her. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was quite taken aback when I read that bit because the rest of it was kind of like, it were a thriller, yeah. like a bit of like a psychological thriller, which is like, fair enough. You can do that, but then when it got to that one graphic bit, I was kind of like, I would just, I, I had to put the book down. Yeah. So I was kind of like, oh, okay, this has do you happened. Read a lot, do you read a lot of thrillers? No. All oh, right. Because I was thinking, like, when I was going through mine, I read a lot more thrillers and you read a lot more fantasy. Why a fantasy? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Because my, my favourites are both disturbing and... Oh, yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah. I love disturbing books. Someone put on the Red Handed um, Facebook group yesterday, someone posted about um, someone saying that women were more interested in true crime because it it's useful for us to know what to do to defend ourselves or to stay out of certain situations and loads of the comments were like no that's not true and I was just like yeah this is why I like home invasion films because oh, that's no. the thing I'm terrified of and I cannot get enough of those films if I could if I had to pick one kind of film to watch for the rest of my life it would be that oh yeah I could anything, watch them but I don't anything that's someone enclosed in a space and they have to like defend that space or stay safe in that space. Oh, it's my jam. I love it. Have you watched um, The Strangers, The Purge? Um, oh, what's the one with Gabrielle Union? That one's fantastic. Anyway, that's my favourite. I love them. Yeah, I recommend uh, Ready or Not on, I think it's still on Now TV. Is that the game one yeah after the wedding oh yes I do need to watch that it is it is quite it's quite comical mm-hmm. as well it's kind of one of them that it's like kind it's of got dark. Adam Brody in it yeah and I love Adam Brody yeah if you like that kind of thing that was quite yeah I enjoyed that I just don't like I just keep my own flashbacks to um, what is it? Dark web. Un- <laughs> is it unfriended? <laughs> unfriended. Colon the dark web or dark web. Oh, I don't know then. So it oh, would either be home invasion done. films or anything about the dark web. That would be me for the rest of time. Oh, the dark web's just scary. I don't like it. It is. Because we've talked about it before that I'm really scared of accidentally like trying to log on to Facebook and I accidentally put in the wrong URL and it takes me onto some dark web thing and then 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 they just come and kill me because I don't know what happens on the dark web. No. All I know about it is from films and that series of Criminal Minds when they're all in the dark web or that episode of Elementary when they walk into a cafe. And Sherlock's like, hey, can you can you help us with this? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And Sherlock's like, you're literally on the dark web now. We're in a cafe. Do you think that's appropriate? Elementary is such a good show. Do you think the dark web's like as dark as what people make it out to be? Or do you think it's being kind of fictionalised because of it being in TV and stuff so much? I think it's worse. What, in real life? I think it's worse in real life because I don't think that people can imagine what people are really like. Yeah, I suppose. Army Hammer, case in point. Army Hammer is in Cars 3. Oh, God, no. He's in Cars 3 or 2. I don't know. I think he's in Cars 3. He's in Cars 3. And the man is atrocious. 
I don't know how he is as a car, because I haven't got to Cars 3 yet in the Cars cinematic universe. <laughs> I haven't reached who that needs, point Who yet. needs the MCU when you've got the Cars universe? So are but those... You, yeah. Yeah, I read other books. I read, like, obviously, I read Six of Crows. I finally, finally gave in and read that. And that one's yeah. really good, but... Everyone Give talks in. about. I wanted. <laughs> I wanted to try give more depth on. Do you know other books which are good but aren't your mainstream. Yeah. But also, kind of what, we could do when the Netflix show comes out. We could talk about Six of Crows then, because I definitely want to watch that. I want to see what they've done to it. Yeah. I read a thing about it the other day actually that was saying that season two if it's renewed for season two mm-hmm. could potentially build up to be the six of crows plot yeah and so either season two or season three they think they're building it up right to that which is why they're showing some of their characters backstory okay do you know because obviously it explained in the six of crows books but the track i don't know I just hope they don't. If they make Kaz and Inej kiss, I will riot in the streets. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need, I need, I need that I need tension. Six, six episodes of build up, and then and then the like, I don't know, touch elbows. That's what I want. Do they kiss That's in the it. end of Crooked Kingdom? I don't know. I think they hold hands. Oh yeah, they might just hold hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want, I want the point to be. I don't want him to change it. So the the kissing and the cuddling. Yeah. I no, want him want looking repulsed that anyone wants to touch <laughs> him, and I want that flashback of him using his brother's corpse. It's a body board. <laughs> <laughs> not as a raft, not as a life saving raft, as a bo- body board. I couldn't Jeez. think of what I couldn't think of the other word. It was like raft, that's it, or a floor, <laughs> bodyboard. Would you like to do your books? Yeah. Right. So my two books are both thrillers, and they're both kind of psychological thrillers. Um, so the first one is *The Good Son* by Jong Yoo Jun, which is a Korean bestseller. So it's set in Seoul. And it's about Eugen, who he's 26. He's a swimmer. Did you hear that? What was that? It was me because I've been drinking carbonated beverages. Oh, I thought I thought <laughs> it was, I thought it was Olive stomach growling. No. So my first pick is The Good Son by Jong Yoo Jong, which is about Eugen. He's a 26-year-old swimmer, and he lives with his mum. He has these blackouts and seizures that he's had since he was a teenager and so he wakes up one morning and he doesn't know what's happened because he's had a blackout but he's covered in blood and he kind of he follows the footprints downstairs and his mum is there deceased rip mum she's not there anymore um and he has to work out what happened and he tries to piece it together without calling the police because they'll think that he killed her and he doesn't know that he didn't so yeah and his brother calls and says that he's on his way but why did mum call early this morning and he's like I don't know I don't know why she called um and so he's got to deal with his brother his auntie comes in and out because she's trying to find her because they were meant to meet up and then you never she never turned up so it's really good and I think it's interesting because I like stories where the person who's involved is trying to work out what's happened but also he's suspicious of his mum because they've got a oh, kind right. of weird, they've got a weird relationship and she he's trying to work out what he was doing during this blackout but also what she was doing because there's also been this 
this girl has been discovered. Um, so police don't know what's happened, but they found this body of this young woman. And he has an earring that matches the description of a missing earring that she had. So he was trying to find out what's happened to her and then goes home, has an argument with his mum and then wakes up and she's dead. And he doesn't know what's happened in the time between that. Um, it is just really interesting, but I think there's been comparisons between it and we need to talk about Kevin, which mm. it, it doesn't quite fit because like that's quite clearly we need to talk about Kevin is basically what to do when your child is a psychopath. Um, yeah. And it doesn't can you go see, well, does it? But <laughs> can you see the um, like twists and turns coming in it, or are they genuinely like surprises? They're surprises in that they're not like complete surprises that come out of nowhere. So you're just like, what? That doesn't make any sense. There are ones mm. that you're just like, oh. Okay. It's just, they're just nicely woven in, which is really it's quite nice. It's not a nice book. It's not graphic like other thrillers. Um, but yeah, he's just wor- trying to work out if he's guilty of something or why he might be guilty of something. But yeah, I don't want to give I don't want to give too much away. Because I also think that you will really like it, so I don't want to ruin it for you. Um, I know, I'm tempted to. It's five ninety nine on Kindle. I'm so tempted okay. just to buy it. I would do, because it's great. Guardian says, a crafty, creepy story of a psychopath's coming of age. Oh. Yeah. Is it American Psycho here? It would be. It, it's like American Psycho if Patrick Bateman was, at his heart, a good person. Which is okay. he's- I thought you were gonna say if Patrick Bateman was Korean. <laughs> well actually, no because you go through all of this and you're like, oh he just he doesn't know what's happened and he's just he's just innocent, he's trying to work out what's happened. But then is he is he innocent at all? It's it's very, very good. Very, very good. Very, very, very good. Um, Yeah, so I really liked it. And the author has, she's written another one um, that came out before this. And I can't remember what it's called. I've ordered it, it's on the way from somewhere. (laughs) But my second book, my second book is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, which we both read like at the start of quarantine. Yeah. Quarantine 1.0. Because I read it. And I needed to talk about it with someone. <laughs> so I made so I was the willing it. victim. <laughs> um, I've made my auntie read it as well since then. She's like, What do you read? Oh my god, have you yes. I'm literally I'm trying to get I'm trying to get Senna to read it and she won't because she's not, not she sure. don't read she don't read a lot anyway. And mm. I just think that if I'm like, oh, I'll read this, it's really good. <laughs> and then when she gets to it, she's like, Jess, what the hell have you given me? Like, really concerned about, like, my mental well-being. Yeah. So just quickly, what happens in Pretty Girls? You want me to say? I don't, we can both do it. So Pretty Girls is about these two sisters. And so it starts off with one of the one of them her husband dies and she arranges the funeral and then the other sister turns up at the funeral and they've been estranged for years because of this because of her husband so the brother-in-law of the other sister and they've been estranged for all these years and so she goes home after the funeral and someone's broken into the house and then she goes into the office to kind of check goes through the house to check that things are there goes into the, his office and finds things on his hard drive that are disturbing and she takes them to the local police station and they say oh no it's fake it's fine but she doesn't think that it's fine and she just kind of digs deeper into that and her sister is also trying to work out with her what has happened because she's never trusted him and it all just goes back to their sister who went missing when they were teenagers and was never found and it's honest it's such 
it's such a good thriller. I think it's one of the best thrillers that I've read. And it's completely traumatic. It's an experience to read. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely an experience. I think the, like, I would have struggled processing everything that was happening in it. Mm-hmm. Ha- I can't, happening in, happening in it. If, <laughs> if I didn't have someone to talk to about it, because obviously mm-hmm. you'd already read it when I did. Yeah. And I get why you wanted someone to read it. Because mm-hmm. I think trying to process the events what happened in that book on your own, you need to talk to someone and just be like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Because like what we said about before, what we said about the dark web stuff. So much of what happens in that is historic. So it's on like VHS oh, yeah. tapes. So it's. Oh, God, it is, isn't it? Because, yeah. Yeah. So oh. I wouldn't recommend Pretty Girls to people who don't like intense books that involve very graphic descriptions of it is torture yeah torture, rape, murder there's quite a lot of triggers the book book comes with trigger warning well it needs trigger warnings it doesn't but it should oh right but so they're on Goodreads and they're on like reviews of it. I I definitely put a lot of trigger warnings on my review that I did. Um, I keep on getting flashbacks to just random bits in the whenever we talk about it. I just get flashbacks of certain bits of the book too when you start remembering. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's just awful. It's because it's really good to see it because it splits between the sisters and one of them's like the straight laced sister who everything's gone right in her life um and then her other sister who kind of got kicked out of the picture and things have gone wrong for her and she's she's got to look after her daughter and all that stuff and then and then when it goes to the dad oh. so the chapters oh. flip between the sisters and then these snippets of their dad as he's trying mm. to find his oldest daughter, their older sister, he's trying to find her and he's talking to the girls. And it's really nice. Even though he's not a character in the main bulk of the story, he's really important to it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And just, I don't know, all of the books that I've read of Karen Slaughter, because I've read like, Ten of her books last year. Um, all of them are quite horrific. There's no, I can't describe them in any other way. They are horrific. She covers really horrible things, but she doesn't do it in a way that I tend to only read thrillers written by women now. I've realised mm. because the th- there are certain things that they use that male writers use for shock value that women writers don't that's not to say that it's not within it's not in their writing they do still talk about the same kind of things but they're not it's not used for shock value it's just used as a and this happened as well do you know what I mean oh there's just so many like twists and turns in that book I would love them to make a film of it. But I would recommend people to, if you like me that don't really read thrillers mm-hmm. and you just want to, because it's just a standalone book, it's not a series, yeah. I would recommend read. It's such a good read. Cause and then the you ones... can go back to your YA fantasy when you're done. <laughs> go back to your happy place. Go back to the safe space. I don't have a safe space anymore. All all of that is thrillers. All my shelves are thrillers. Midnight Sun. Oh, listen to that on audiobook. And that in a thriller. Yeah. It could have been a thriller. If you'd no, have listened to his instincts. Could, if you'd have listened to his instincts. Been, killed her off straight away. There, There's your thriller. That could have been your safe space. 
I'm not having Edward Cullen's mind as my safe space. That's disgusting. Do you know I still haven't read it? I've only read, I've only read like 50 pages and I haven't even attempted it again. It's not worth it. What are you reading at the moment? Like not right this moment. What I'm reading at the moment is Point Roberts by Alexander Rigby and it's a thriller mystery. It's about these this town in Washington called Point Roberts and between 1987 and 1989 only in February five people were killed every year so since then they shut the whole town down and no one comes in or out and so one of the main characters is a writer and his sister was one of the people who died and he's written a book called The Fifteen and he's got all the evidence of what happened and he just is still trying to find the killer Ooh. it feels like meddling kids by edgar cantero and but not as like scooby-doo-ish because that's quite scooby-doo um kids solving crimes this is just him trying to put it together and trying to work it out but it's still it's split between these different characters around the town it's quite good i'm not that far into it though so yeah it does sound good what are you reading because you just finished throne of glass or a throne of something the third one is yeah. it air of fire finished it last night and i'm not starting another one yet i'm just trying to decide if i want to carry on well obviously i'm going to finish that series but i don't know whether to carry on with it or read something else and then kind of come back to it are you going to read Akita? You can end up reading it. Oh, I know I am. It's the same plot with Moss Mutt. That's what people say about it. I've yeah. not read either. I started not... listening to the audiobook of A Court of Thousand Roses, though, and I was not ready for that to be described to me. Would you read Priory of the, or- Priory of the Orange Tree? No, because I've seen how big that book is. I ain't going near that. Yeah. It's like 800 <laughs> pages. It's up there. But that's about an assassin. And there's like a little bit of magic. Not a little bit. There's full-on dragons in it, but there's magic's not like every character running around doing spells, and being hocus pocus all the time. Can you tell? I read. A, I read so much fantasy, just like so much hocus pocus all the time over here. <laughs> do you know what I do want to read though? No. It's called heart. It's called heartless. It's meant to be like a back, based on a backstory to the Queen of Hearts. Uh, long before she was Queen of Hearts, Catherine Pinkerton was just a girl who wanted to fall in love. Uh, she may be one of the most desired girls in Wonderland and a favourite of the mo- unmarried King of Hearts, but her interests lie elsewhere. A talented baker. All she was doing was opening a shop with her best friend. Oh. <laughs> and then she meets Jess. The handsome and mysterious court joker. At risk of offending the king, as she and Jeff enter into an intense secret courtship. She's determined to define her own destiny and fall in love on her terms, but in land thriving with magic, madness, and monsters, fate has other plans. <laughs> You're going to end up getting that, aren't you? Going to be smutting it. <laughs> I hope everyone can join us for our next Valentine's Day special episode. Oh, yeah. It will if we're doing it in two weeks, it will be. Yeah, yeah. In time for Valentine's. Ooh. So that's it for us this week. Um, those were our top picks of 2020. If you've read them or you want to talk about them, or if you've got any suggestions for us based on our recommendations, um, please let us know. We're both on Instagram. What's your Instagram, Jess? Mine is because you've got a new bookstagram. I have my bookstagram is Fables and Fiction. Mm-hmm. And mine is Books for Becca. So follow us there. So tune in next time for lovey dovey romance stuff. And we'll talk to you then. Catch you later. <laughs>